Hey, Plumber Tom here. If you're preparing for a plumbing state test or trying to improve your knowledge of code and understanding of plumbing, don't forget to check in the description below for links to study guides, online courses, and other resources that will help you to learn the code and pass your test. When you click on those links and purchase resources, you're helping me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back to our continued discussion of horizontal wet venting. We've looked at principles for wet venting from the code. Then we looked at some diagrams and some possible layouts and examples of how you would run horizontal wet vents for both the international and uniform plumbing codes. Now let's look specifically at violations. These are common mistakes that people make as they're installing or attempting to install horizontal wet vent systems. These are mistakes that you don't want to make. So pay close attention to this video. After watching this video, you should have a really good handle on what you can and can't do as you install horizontal wet vents. And this empowers you to go out and create and design your own systems as you are running pipes for wet venting. To look at some common horizontal wet vent violations. These are things that plumbers often do, mistakes that we make. You need to be aware of what not to do. So here's the first one, horizontal wet vent violation one. We have a wet vented bathroom group with a tub, a toilet, and the lavatory. Now the wet vent would extend from the lavatory downstream. So what's the problem here? Well, the tub is connected upstream. The toilet can connect upstream because that is its individual connection to the wet vent. But the tub should not connect to the toilet arm. It should connect downstream from the lavatory so that it has an individual connection to the wet vent. Plumbers do this all the time. Inspectors overlook this all the time. This is how it should be done correctly. The tub should branch off from the horizontal wet vent downstream from the lavatory, even if that means it has to run a little bit farther with its trap arm, and of course, limiting that trap arm to what code would allow. Check out this real world example of a horizontal wet vented bathroom group. The three inch pipe is headed towards the toilet. We've got a four by three closet 90 going up. Branching off, we have the lavatory drain. That's the vertical pipe going up. This pipe serves as the horizontal wet vent going downstream. So all of the fixtures have to connect to that going downstream. Now you can see there's a Y that branches off and goes to catch the tub from the lavatory drain. A plumber might have considered moving that closer to the tub itself, branching off near the closet 90. But once again, we have to have direct connection or individual connection to the horizontal wet vent for each of the fixtures. Let's have a look at horizontal wet vent violation two. We have a bathroom group with a tub, toilet, and lavatory. On the back side of the wall, there is a kitchen sink, and that's very close in proximity to the rest of those fixtures. While it would be very convenient for the plumber to branch off and go to the kitchen sink from the lavatory drain, this does not fit into the definition of a horizontal wet vent because, again, it is restricted to bathroom fixtures only. The kitchen sink is not a bathroom fixture and should therefore be piped outside or around the horizontal wet vented bathroom group. Here is an example of the correct installation for that scenario. We have the kitchen sink branching off separately and downstream from the horizontal wet vented bathroom group. Horizontal wet vent violation three. In the upper right corner of this picture, we see a three inch pipe coming down. This is a stack catching waste from fixtures in an upper level. It comes down and connects and ramrods all the way through the center of our horizontal wet vented bathroom group. Now we talk about venting and the importance of airflow and you can be assured that dumping a whole bunch of waste from fixtures above through the middle of a bathroom group like this will have an impact on airflow. So we cannot have other fixtures rushing through the middle, or in other words, you can't just branch off and create a bathroom group and continue on. The bathroom group has to be separated. Here is the correct way that we would install piping. We have that three inch stack coming down. It comes and it connects downstream from our horizontal wet vented bathroom group. This way, all of those fixtures are together in the bathroom group 
and that horizontal wet vent from the lav can serve those fixtures without interference from all of that other waste from above. Horizontal wet vent violation four. Here you can see we have two bathroom groups back to back. We've dealt with this before. The only difference here is that the one on the bottom of this picture is a master bathroom and it has a shower in the lower right corner. So the violation here is that if we try to catch all of those fixtures, we exceed the maximum number of fixtures, which is two bathroom groups or 12 drainage fixture units. You can see we've branched off and tried to catch that shower and connect it into our double wet vented bathroom group. Here's an illustration of that. You can see the Y coming off to the left. This is similar to what we saw before. The maximum amount we can have are two labs, two toilets, and two tubs. We've gone over our maximum amount of fixtures and therefore this is a violation. Let's see how this should be done. Here we have the correct installation. We do have that shower branching off, but it has its own vent. It will be individually vented and then the rest of that bathroom group will carry on. Now you can see from this illustration that it is okay to have additionally vented bathroom group fixtures within our horizontally wet vented bathroom groups. And this also brings up another important point. We can separate out several portions or separate horizontal wet vent bathroom groups. Let me describe this. We have at the top two lavatories common vented. They are serving as a horizontal wet vent and they will extend downstream to vent the two toilet connections. If we say that is one horizontal wet vented bathroom group, we can begin another one starting with our shower drain. The shower drain is vented and therefore that vent can serve as a horizontal wet vent going downstream to also vent both of those bathtubs. So we have a separate horizontal wet vented bathroom group. These are all bathroom group fixtures. They are connected together on a three inch line but we are venting them separately. This way we can accomplish all the venting we need for all of those fixtures connected. All right, now that we've looked at some examples of what to do and what not to do, let's jump over to the International Plumbing Code. This is table 912.3. In this table, it gives us the adjustments that we would make. There's going to be a limit on the drainage fixture units for each pipe size. What this does is it ensures that we'll have enough airflow inside of that size of pipe to accommodate this drain being used as a vent. On the vent size table 912.3, we see one column on the left, which is the wet vent pipe size. This includes one and a half inch, two inch, and three inch. On the right, we have drainage fixture unit load. One and a half inch pipe is allowed one drainage fixture unit. Two inch pipe is allowed four drainage fixture units. And three inch pipe is allowed 12 drainage fixture units. Now this may not seem too significant to you until we compare this to the table back in chapter seven and find that a two inch pipe is normally capable of handling six drainage fixture units for a horizontal branch. And a three inch pipe is normally capable of handling 20 drainage fixture units for a horizontal branch. And when we compare that, you can see that there is a restriction on the amount of drainage fixture units in a horizontal wet vent and this restriction is what allows for that additional airflow. This is how we keep the pipe big enough to handle all those fixtures and allow for airflow. This is why wet venting works. Let's have a quick look at wet vent sizing from the Uniform Plumbing Code. This is taken from section 908.2.2. .2. They do not have a table in there, but it's just spelled out. So I've put it on a table for us. First of all, wet vent sizing is not available below two inch pipe, so one and a half inch is not an option. It says the wet vent shall be not less than two inches in diameter for four drainage fixture units or less, and not less than three inches in diameter for five drainage fixture units or more. Drainage fixture unit information can be found on table 702.1 and their sizing table 703.2. All right, this concludes lesson three on horizontal wet vents. Hopefully now you have a much better understanding of how these work, the principles that are involved, and some of the ways that you can apply that to accomplish venting systems. Once again, let me emphasize, this is incredibly effective compared to individual venting. 
If we individual vented every one of these fixtures, there's a lot more pipe, a lot more fittings, and a lot more labor. Horizontal wet venting can save a lot. And it's important that we know how to use them properly so that we can take advantage of these venting principles. Join me next time in lesson four, we will examine circuit venting, a whole other set of tools that you can use as you're out there venting drainage systems. I'll see you then.